This is your daily briefing, so pay attention. Italian Twitterati Fabrizio Romano believes that the holdup in getting the Antonio Conte deal across the line is that Conte wishes to bring in within his entourage seven persons opposed to four persons and that this has caused an issue with Tom Hotspur. What is going on here? Right, it could be money, in which case this is very short-sighted because I don't know, but I'm guessing that the value of salary that they could be quibbling over here is probably a couple of hundred thousand-ish, maybe more. Highly unlikely to be a lot more. And I think in the whole sort of spirit of a firm coming in, there are this, this, this separate crew, a new entity, that they should all be outsiders and they should all be, you know, like, you know, you've seen the Magnificent Seven, Yul Brynner, they're all handpicked. I think that works really well. And the idea that they would have to somehow integrate with the club and might have um, Ledley King or Ryan Mason um, foisted upon them is, is, is not good. It's not clever. It's not helpful. King, I hope I don't have to say um, forever in his debt for his work as a footballer. But as a defensive coach, just look at last season, absolute disasters. And as far as Ryan Mason goes, I don't think it's unfair comment to say we've seen enough. Thanks very much. Um, and, you know, this is the culture of the club rearing its ugly head again, that we have to have this kind of corporate veneer and the idea of too many strangers being let into the saloon um, might be bad for business or what have you. I just don't see the point and I, I, I just like to get this done at this stage. Nobody knows if it's going to work, but for goodness sakes, let's not eat into any more of uh, the close season. Next up, the, the Tottenham way is something that was, um, and the Tottenham DNA is something that uh, re has been rearing its head. It's bubbling along nicely. Um, and I had a, a ponder on that because I like to overthink things. And I was wondering what it actually meant. And I, I referenced Push and Run, the Arthur Rowe sketch. And one of the uh, very kind people that in, engages with us on this thing um, took exception to that and uh, had a whole load of uh, like the, 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 a style sort of um, mood book of, of, of player names and, and eras at the club. And then it dawned on me that, no disrespect to him, but it dawned on what I was saying, that, that we're talking about cobblers here. Absolute nonsense. There's no such thing as a Tottenham way. And if we set aside the past and f focus on where we are now, I made the comment last time about that after 20 minutes, if nothing exciting has happened, or there hasn't been promise of a goal, or we're not ahead, then that's when the the the, the you know the the dubious comments start to come out. Oh, uh, take so and so off. You know, you know all the usual uh, blah, blah blah. You know, let's sell sell him, and I'll drive him there, and all that sort of thing. But the reality is, the fans want to win, and I know <laughs> some of this may shock you, but for all the twaddle that gets typed on the internet about what. I expect to see what I, as a fan, demand and all the rest of it. And I don't like using words like entitlement, but the, the bottom line is that winning is all and everything else is excuses, right? It's not complicated. And this business of this having this sort of moral high ground, oh, there's, well, I don't mind winning 6-0, but I do expect a certain amount of uh, spectacular edge to the goal. Who talks like that? Nobody talks like that. Have you have you ever left White Hart Lane and you're trudging up the high road thinking about, you know, have I got it in me for another pint? Um, shall I just bury my face in a box of chicken? You know, weighing up your options 
on that, on, uh, you know, what's a happy walk down there, <laughs> stimulating all the memories and a miserable walk when you've lost on the, up to the tube. And do, have you ever overheard one guy said to the other, well, I thought we'd played some bright attacking football in places. And, um, you know, there was a real, real uh, couple of moments, a couple of little flicks and tricks. You know, it wasn't all bad. And the guy next to him says, you're a nitwit. We lost 3-0. No. Nobody, nobody would, would talk like that either. And the prime example for this, just, just for anybody saying, oh, yeah, but. Let me head your, oh, yeah, but off at the pass. West Ham were making a disproportionate amount of noise for their own um, self-inflicted mess. They moved from the, 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 the toilet that is um, uh, Upton Park, an awful area, the whole tower block's disgusting, <laughs> nasty place. They moved from there to this even grimmer scenario with this uh, carpet fabric warehouse um, remnant thing around the track. And, you know, the nearest uh, person to the, the, the pitch side was in a different postcode. Self-inflicted misery. They should have knocked the bloody thing down um, and built themselves a, a purpose-built thing. And they were weeping that they, want, you know, they, were play, they weren't playing the West Ham way because there'd been such upheaval within the, within the club, not internally and externally. There were some really nasty scenes and... Um, Love them or despise them, you know, one of the um, uh, pawn barons was, was cornered at one point by, by agitated fans. And we saw pretty unwholesome images of fan, West Ham fan on West Ham fan violence um, inside the stadium. And they were talking about, oh, we want the West Ham. No, you wanted to win. You actually wanted to win some football matches and get a little bit of self-belief back. That's what you were after. And if that was a lie, then it's proved to be true by the fact that David Moyes has come along, he's done some superb work, and he's won lots of games for you. You've finished comparatively in recent history's uh, terms um, very high up the table. And you're not talking about the West Ham way anymore. I haven't seen a West Ham fan or, or uh, even mention it. So it's about winning. It's not about some magical DNA. That was a stick to beat Mourinho with. It was, it was, it was easier to say that we lost sight of our, our, our identity than it was to say, I, I bought another manager and I didn't back him. It was far easier to do that. OK, um, I like to examine disinformation and encourage people to um, uh, be aware of it. So what I don't want to do is turn this into a slang match. So I'm not going to name the, the writer of the, this paragraph or two here, but I do want to share it with you because this is the stuff that really gets my goat. It's the stuff that slips under the radar, that pop, people pop into articles and it's pollution. Nothing shy of pollution. So this is the close to a piece that was published in the last couple of days. This is why the criticism of Levy feels misplaced. Levy has overseen a few difficult years of decline at Tottenham. And with the team slipping from consecutive title challenges and a Champions League final down out of the top four and into next season's Europa Conference League. And yet Levy is close to appointing one of the best managers in the world. It might not be what Spurs fans were hoping for last week, but it still would be a triumph. This is propaganda. The criticism of Levy is all generated by him. The slipping away from the title challenges is because for two summer windows and one winter window, you try saying that with your teeth in, and one winter window, he didn't buy anybody for Poch. We were the only team in Europe's top five leagues that didn't buy anybody. He does all the buying. There's no committee. 
Poch came out and said, well, maybe they should change my job title because I, I, I don't get involved in that side. And the Champions League final, we were a burnt out car before that game even took place. In an absolute mess, heartbreaking. The Europe, a European Cup final. And we went there with a team that you had Ericsson who didn't want to get injured and didn't want to be there. And there was the, the politicking of picking Harry Kane over Lucas Moura, who'd scored a hat-trick in the previous match and saved us, pulled us out of the, 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 the loser's bin. One of the most weird football matches I've ever watched in my life, that game was. And I've seen Tottenham play some strange uh, performances, but that was just weird. That, that uh, I won't go on, because otherwise we go into, like, you know... But it looked like there'd been match fixing involved. Spurs were just completely and utterly um, passengers in that match. And it's all stemmed from the transfer activity and letting the thing rot and the absence of churn in the squad. Those boys went into that game, ha ha they were just tuned out. They'd listened to Poch for so long and bless him, he couldn't do any more. And now, he says, Levy's close to appointing one of the best men. Spurs hoping for last week. I think the reality is people hoping for uh, Poch to come back last week, those people that were misled by a dumb, dumb rumour, I, I don't think we should count their vote. I don't think, because it didn't make sense. It didn't make an iota of sense to bring Poch back. But now he's signing one of the best managers in the world. This takes us back to that, that remark I made with you yesterday about, yes, yes, Daniel, you have spent 150 million or whatever the number was, but you bought too much junk. You bought too much stuff from spreadsheets and you didn't listen to your coaches and you didn't go and get the players they wanted because mother knows best. That's your mantra. Well, I'll tell you what, Mum, if you don't sort this out with Conti, then I can see a situation where you're down the road because you're running out of steam. Does Conte want Kane? I would. Is he going to get Kane? Dunno. Is he going to get a churn on that squad? Is he going to be listened to? Lots of decisions. Will our illustrious leader manage to make any good ones? I'll leave it with you. We'll talk again. Good luck. Keep it on.